On Blues Radio International, we're here today in Los Angeles with three very important people with the Across the Great Divide concert. Greg Williamson, Barbara Newman, and Jed Hilly. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for, Thanks having, for us. having us. I wanted to start with you, Greg, and then have everyone take a shot. What, what, what's going on in putting these two bodies of music together? What's the intent here, and, and how do you see it all coming together? Um, well, I've always been a huge fan of Americana music and a huge fan of the blues, and the blues is the bedrock of Americana, and, uh, you know, I love what these guys do and the work that they do and the music that they advocate for, and it seemed to me like it was a natural fit, and I've talked to Jed about it for a while, I've talked to Barbara about it, and we finally found the opportunity to bring the two of them together. Barbara, from your perspective. I think it's a great thing for everybody. I mean, Jed and I have known each other for a number of years now, and Greg and I have been in touch for a couple of years now. Uh, so the marriage worked out really well. Um, the blues is the original music form of this country. And everything that Americana does, even if it's not blues, it touches the blues and we touch them. Their tent's very large and we're definitely a part of it. And Jed's been very gracious within his organization to acknowledge that with major blues artists being honored at the Americana Fest every year. This past year, Irma Thomas and Buddy Guy, who are both in the Blues Hall of Fame. So we live in each other's backyards, and it seems like this is a great way to bring more attention to each of our music forms and while we hold hands so that we connect people musically. That's really what it's all about. And I think in terms of, uh, to me, uh, the blues represents a, a, a fine art form, um, a true art form. and and. Um, for that to uh, uh, for that to uh, uh, be brought to the forefront is part of what we do in Americana. We we all we support gospel. We support traditional country. I think in many ways, you know, there are genres are, are defined vertically from traditional country and the blues and folk and rock and roll and um, Americana is horizontal. It's sort of it goes through all of them. You, know, you can hear in Lucinda Williams, you know, rock and roll, the blues, traditional country, all of it, all of it. Yeah. And um, and I think with uh, for for us to partner, you know, with the Blues Association, um, the blues is the foundation, as as my friends have said, it's the bedrock, it's the original American art form, all of popular American music stems from from that point, um, and it's just, uh, it's, just it's just great. It's great to be here, and we're grateful to Greg oh, and very Nicole. Grateful. Um, these guys have put their hearts into this, and yeah. it's really all about heart from these guys' well, point we of view. We love what they're doing. It's about authentic music, and there's not a lot of people advocating for that and doing it the right way, and uh, these organizations, I think, represent two of the best in the country, if not the two best, and uh, to bring them together it's just a logical fit, and it's a great union, and we're psyched to kick it off here in LA. Is this something that uh, just came together in someone's mind, or is it someone? Uh, well, was it a series of meetings? How did the I idea think evolve? the genesis of it is um, Jed and I work on a benefit concert together in New York City. He sits on a board of uh, a concert called Love Rocks NYC that I do for God's Love We Deliver. We formed a friendship there. I did a concert for the Blues Foundation about a year ago, and then I spoke to the two of them about getting together, and they already had a relationship, and they respect each other so much, and it just made sense, and um, you know, that's, that's why we did it, right? As long as you, it's funny, because the conversations <laughs> are, are sort of ongoing, you yeah. know, Greg and I are having these conversations, yeah. independent, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you two are having the conversations, and then we on the side get together once for the last couple of years, once a year, and we have a, uh, an American Roots Summit, if, if you will, and we don't really advertise it, but the other executive directors of, of uh, the Bluegrass Music Association and the Folk Alliance, um, and putting the four together with Blues and Americana, the four of us get together, and we just talk trash. <laughs> That's a great way to say it. <laughs> it's, it's the one day of the year. <laughs> um, where we share in, in a cone of silence, you know, our trials and tribulations of, of being an executive director, what the pressures are. We lost a, a dear friend, the, the previous uh, executive director of the Folk Alliance, mm -hmm. and some of us think it was due to stress. Um, 
uh, because they're intense jobs and they're passionate jobs and they're passionate communities. So, you know, that was part of the impetus for us starting to get together right. to take care of each other. We actually met at Folk Alliance. So, I mean, we met at another conference from another roots organization and started attending each other's events and supporting each other's work and figuring out how we can bring attention to each other because that brings attention to everybody. Right. If Americana fans hear blues music, by nature, they're gonna love the blues because it's just a smaller part of a larger Americana world. And if blues artists hear other Americana music, they're gonna love Americana because they're gonna hear where the blues came through right. to Americana and we're gonna build broader audiences for everybody um, you know, we're not in competition. We're here to work together. And, you know, it's an old saying, the rising tide carries all boats, but that's really what we're trying to do. I think also the, um, what I'm privileged to do in, in that Americana sort of represents all of the genres. And what I've seen in my decade plus of doing what I do, um, part of the essence of what Americana is, to me, is to, is to galvanize the community. It's part of my job. I've got to, I want to honor the blues and yet I represent a more contemporary form of that but the inspiration is is critical and I think we've all, I think I think the Americana contribution has been when, when we're all sort of doing things sort of separately we're not gaining as much traction right. and I think what Americana has given all of us is a means by which to Bring it all uh, together. To bring it all together, and 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 not not to uh, to keep that. It's important that the art forms re remain distinct, and that's sort of some of the things that I have to fight for all yeah. the time. And people say, "Well, that's not Americana." We're like, "You're right. That's the blues." <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, uh, but uh, but I think. Uh, and it's interesting because in the Grammy world, they actually have these different categories. There's the blues albums, and there's the folk, and there's the bluegrass, and there's Americana. And Americana is something that is uniquely, not distinctly blues, or distinctly country, or distinctly folk, but an amalgamation of these that give it a unique sound. But at the same time, they're doing a beautiful job of honoring our tradition, and honoring the traditions of the rest of those older forms that are known for what they are going back, you know, 100 years or more. I just want to say too, going back to the genesis of this, you know, one of the masterminds behind this with me is Jimmy Vivino. And Jimmy, if you know him, is a real blues man. But he was also the original music director along with Larry Campbell for Levon Helm when he started his Midnight Rambles. Levon was Jed's greatest ambassador of, you know, mm -hmm. when Americana was really starting and thriving in a big way. So having Jimmy as the music director for this is kind of full circle. And he's really been the perfect person to bridge the blues and Americana together. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. The, 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 in 2007, I happened to go to the barn in, in, in Woodstock, and somewhere around 2 in the morning, I managed to convince Levon that he was broke and I was broke, and how about a, you do a ramble at the Ryman? Right. And they came down and did it, and Jimmy was there, and, and that was I think our accountant told me at the time we had three months of survival for the organization oh gosh. and uh, and Levon and I met Levon and taught and he was seven weeks I think it was after I met him we did the show at the Ramble and it took us out of debt and it paid some of his bills and everybody had an incredible time and that was and it also really ignited Americana music and yeah. all these younger acts you know, they revere Levon and the band and all that, and um, in many ways, you know, that kicked it off. It totally kicked and it off. Jimmy was a big part of that yep. with Levon. He started those rambles in 2003 or 2002. So that's when I met Jimmy and I became friends with him. I was a fan and used to go up there. And, you know, for us to do this together and to bring these genres or this music together and these organizations together, that's that's the going back even further than talking to these folks. That's the real genesis yeah. of it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. But it's nice to know too that when I was speaking to them, and I'm learning this during the interview, they had already had conversations about let's do something together. I guess that's why they said yes to me. Very good. <laughs> well, it was funny because I had been at the Blues Foundation for maybe three months, and Greg called me out of the blue, and you know, yeah. I, I was not somebody that came out of blues and into the organization. I came out of way out of left field. Uh, not way. working way out of left field, out of not-for-profit management <laughs> yeah. with knowledge of music and an awareness of the music industry through multiple yeah. 
yeah. scenarios, but I wasn't a deeply involved blues industry person or Americana. That's or why you're running it so well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no history there. And, and, Greg, and Greg calls me out of the blue and I didn't know who Greg was and I knew who Jed was at that point because I knew of these organizations and I'm listening to him telling me he wants to do a benefit for us and you know you're very suspicious when you first start and you don't yeah. know who people are and everybody's trying to grab something from you and I just Greg and I had conversations that went for about a year, yeah. and with this every was the, conversation, this was the first benefit which I did with her, which was just for the Blues Foundation. Right. And yeah. and within the you know, over the course of a year, everything with every conversation was more legitimate. I realized he was who yeah. he was, that this was true. He was really wanting to do this, and then he pulled something off great a year ago in New York, just Blues, and um, called me after the BMAs. He he and Nicola's partner came down to Memphis for the Blues Music Awards, and he said. I really want to do something for Jed, but I really want to do something for you. And right. what do you think? And I said, of course. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's let's make it all happen. Pretty exciting. It's yeah. very exciting. Very exciting. And, and we don't do anything with the intention of it being a one-off. So maybe this will be a regular thing. You know, we hope it will be. We'd love it. Yeah. That's in fact, we thought it was so important yeah. that we arranged our board meeting in LA yeah. uh, on tomorrow. And my board is all here for this event. You know, they're not getting comp tickets, they're buying their tickets, and yeah. they're being regular attendees just like anybody else, but they're showing their support for what, what Greg and Nicole and, what, and, what and Jimmy a, are doing. And what a lineup we have, you know, and Jed and Barbara, and Jed in a big way has been really instrumental in helping us put that together, and, um, you know, that's just, we have some of the biggest stars, you know, who represent the blues and Americana, and really slide between both, like, like Bob Weir and, you know, um, Lucinda. You know, and Leanne Womack. Maybe a surprise or two. Yeah. yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be good. I'd like to see a couple of surprises. That would be good. But, um, and also, there's a lot of youth. There's It, it spans ages. It's You've got a, a John Prine, who's a legend. Yeah. And then you've got Larkin Poe. They're in their 20s, and they're just killing it out there. So We try and keep it really dynamic like that, yeah. What sort of interesting crossovers have you seen just as this has started to unfold and come together? Yeah. What what types of things or interactions with musicians have you well, experienced? Well, with? I mean, I see musicians like I saw Shamika Copeland yesterday, and I was talking to Larkin Poe, and they're just they're so familiar with both organizations, and they've done things on behalf of the Americana uh, Music Organization, on behalf of the Blues Foundation. So I think for them, this is like a really exciting experience to see both organizations come together and something that's totally novel to them. And for some of those artists, a lot of them, but some in particular, this concert was like really built for them, you know? And I think it's also good for the musicians because they're trying to build a fan base. Yes. And if they limit themselves to a very narrow definition of who their fan base should be, they're never gonna get the traction they deserve as really great artists. So if Shamika Copeland, who's a longtime Blues Foundation award winner and blues producer, musician, you know, et cetera, is able to bring a broader audience out of Americana because her music touches that, that field, then she herself can lift up, just like the rest of them can. She's not being untrue to blues, but she's saying, hey, people, I'm messaging and I'm playing music and it's, it's not necessarily my father's blues and she's a great example because her father's in the blues hall of fame it's not necessarily my father's blues but i'm standing on his shoulders and taking it to someplace new well and just one more thing is that you know let's be honest this is this is not pop music you know what i mean this is real authentic music with instruments and people really doing it all so that unfortunately is in the minority in this country so it's another reason just speaking to this point to bring it all together you know. I think it's interesting, we have Bob Weir coming, and, yeah. and the lesson, the music business lesson that the Grateful Dead taught us was the importance of community. Yeah, and it, collaborating. Yeah. They, they built a community, they've never needed the music business, they've never needed brick and mortar retail, they've never needed internet streaming services, they've never needed it, because they built their community, and their community loves them. And that's harder and harder to do. In, today's marketplace. Um, Seth Godin writes about the, you know, what, what, what's going to happen, what, where is the new uh, music industry landscape model? And, and he's convinced it's, it's in that model. It's how do you build that, that community 
And what we do is, you know, I always say to you know managers, we're just a marketing ex extension for you. Come participate, be a part of the bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And as all ships, you know, as the tides raise, the ships will rise. Um, I think we've we've definitely seen that happen.